What's up, my crypto legends? The price of Bitcoin is sitting at crucial level of support where we could be getting a massive bounce. This level needs to hold. It will be explained in today's episode on the higher time frames. We'll be zooming in on the lower time frames and explaining what is going on and what are the most important levels of resistance and support to take into consideration for a trading setup. We are also taking a look at this chart over here, the global liquidity index and the election year to understand, hey, is it still Still going to be bullish during 2024 and 2025. We're taking a look at also the monthly returns here because May, the last three years, have been in the red. And we're also taking a look at the liquidations, guys. So make sure to stay tuned. Now, let's dive in here right into the chart. But before, I want to let you know if you are interested in trading, you got Bybit, which is my number one crypto trading platform. Been using it for over five years. And if you cannot trade on Bybit based on KYC, you do have Bluffing. You got 80,000 dollars worth of bonus and it's no KYC. Just to let you know that the copy trading is already full. I will be doing a live stream later on to explain the settings here and going to start trading from tomorrow in this account. Now let's dive in here right away into the technical analysis. This is the four hourly time frame. Just give a brief explanation on why are we holding this level? Well, this level basically is the weekly close from last week. Okay, we can see here the $63,000, this orange horizontal line right over here, and also the value area low from the entire trading range of March and April. April. When we go to the weekly time frame, just for anybody that does not know, and we zoom out, we can see the weekly candle close and open from the last two weeks. And this level is where it's holding quite nicely. Now you can see also that the value area low is maintaining as support. We have the lower high resistance trend line from the last few weeks that is also maintaining nicely as support. So this zone, no doubt, is extremely important. We are holding quite nicely here, and it does mean that there is a chance to get a bounce to claim yesterday's highs above $65,000. Now, when we do zoom in on the lower time frames here, such as the 30-minute time frame, we are maintaining very nicely this weekly level, guys. We also formed a double bottom right over here just late last night. This is great for a long entry right over there, and speculate that the price is actually going to get that recovery in the next coming hours or next coming days, right? Depending on that volatility. Now, the previous day low from yesterday, okay, was actually maintained very nicely as support right there. This is actually a long trigger. You're holding the weekly. You're holding the lower high resistance trend line. You're also here testing the previous day low. This is from yesterday. And you're forming that local double bottom. These are great great long triggers, no doubt, to speculate here that we are going to break through. When we take a look at the session volume profile, let's analyze the possible scenarios, guys, because no doubt we could have another attempt in breaking down here. And if we do break down from this level, it's not going to be looking too great. I would be looking at the naked point of control here from the 3rd of of May, which it was Friday. This consolidation left a nice high volume node right there. It will not be looking extremely great because if you lose the weekly, you lose the lower high resistance that is not turning into support anymore, it ain't going to be looking too great, but it could be a fake out. It could still be part of this corrective structure, and then it's just going to be a fake out to the downside and the price is going to get a recovery. This zone will be crucial. If we are holding this range, just like we're holding this weekly level, it's going to be looking very good. I mean, no doubt these lows over here is a long trigger for a day trade or even a swing trade to claim yesterday's highs and even get to $67,000 where we do have the huge amount of liquidity. I'm going to explain that in just a few minutes. If we break down from here, this could definitely be a moment that you're going to be fearful. Oh my goodness, we're losing the weekly level. We are losing the value area low from the entire range of March and April. Oh my goodness, this ain't looking too great and we're likely going to go to lower levels. 
If we do stop here at this consolidation level where we have the naked point of control, this is no doubt a zone to speculate if we are going to maintain our support and manage risk quite nicely, that this is just going to be a fake out to the downside and looking for a big massive recovery. As this is very impulsive, this will likely be very corrective. And if we do maintain this level, guys, which is at $61,700 range, we want to consolidate a bit of volatility beneath it is fine. But overall, holding this range is going to be definitely a very good bullish sign. This means that the bears are losing steam to the downside. If we do lose all of these levels, I want the price action to absolutely collapse. Okay, And if it does not extremely collapse and we're starting to maintain here this zone, this is very much a bouncing level. Okay, So we're going to have to manage risk accordingly. We are holding the weekly. This is looking pretty good. What are the most important levels of resistance locally? And I would be very, very cautious here, of course, if I'm looking for a, for a short position. Right now, we've just had a big major move to the downside. We could speculate that this is a bit of a one wave, two wave, three wave, four and five, and we are in the corrective structure. So what we need to pay attention here is the most important levels of resistance. When we get the fixed volume profile here from this range, we got a bit of a range, okay, during the last few days that we actually, you know, holding the value area low. We can see it on the chart. So what about the value area high we, where we just, you know, pretty much about six, $700 away from now. Could we break above it successfully or could it be a big massive fake out? No doubt that the resistance zone that we need to break is from the pivot high to the pivot low, 618 Fibonacci. We've got the valley area high right there. We cannot create the choppiness. It could definitely be a back test from the previous, previous day high. Okay, the Sunday, which has created a failed auction right there, the Sunday high. And no doubt it could be a back test from the failed auction as you're hitting the 618, okay, 78 Fibonacci. If we're starting to get choppy here, I would consider a potential short trade managing risk very well. And that is speculating only on an A, B, C move to the downside. And then we will go from there. I need the reaction here. It's the back test from the Sunday highs of a failed auction. And it's also hitting the 618 and possibly the 78 Fibonacci getting choppy, not explosive. If we are going to consolidate here at this range over here at $64,500 range, then obviously we can see the bulls losing steam and we could speculate on a leg down to coming back down to the lows of today. That's a little bit of the ranges here that I do have. We're not going to go through higher time frame levels. If you are interested in that, I'm doing daily updates in the Legends trading community. We talk about scalping scenarios. Okay, there was a beautiful one that we talked about on yesterday's uh, video update, which was basically this double bottom right over here. Beautiful for a long setup here mentioned in the Legends trading community. Let's go right away with this chart, guys. Super important. We do have the Bitcoin chart to the upside. This is very important. All right. We mentioned this on a video update a few days ago, but it's something to take into consideration. This chart over here with the candlestick is the global liquidity index. Of course, this is when the money printer goes on and there's liquidity everywhere. This is what happened back in March of 2020 where the money printer started to go on and there was a huge amount of liquidity, all right, uh, global liquidity. And this helped for that massive bull run that we had in between 2020 and 2021. What we can also see here, the bull run of 2016 and 2017, we had the global liquidity going up very drastically. Right now, I'm quite surprised about this pump hitting all-time high. I think this is thanks to the ETF in the US, obviously, to get this massive rally to all-time high. But the global liquidity has been going down here during the last couple of years. Now, this could be a corrective move. How long can they be with the interest rates high? and no global liquidity, the money printer not going on. I think there's only going to be a few more months left here. So we get interest rates down and the and, and obviously the money printer going on and helping that massive bull run to happen during the next 6 to 12, 18 months, right? 6 and 18 months approximately till late 2025. So election year is usually very bullish, okay? This is happening in November in the US. Look at the previous three cycles. Election years have been phenomenal for the Bitcoin cycle and also for the stock market. Global liquidity has been going up 
also in election years. So we would expect, if we are going to follow the previous cycles, okay, we would expect the global liquidity to increase in the next coming months, at least at end of 2024, so we can get this bull market going, all right? Not much more has to be said. Election year is bullish. Uh, we've had a major corrective move already of a couple of years. We, we should not sustain because if not, the US is going to get into a huge, massive depression, e recession, right? So I would expect the global liquidity to increase in the next coming months at the end of 2024, approximately. Now, May has been usually a bearish month uh, for Bitcoin during the last three years, all right? On average, it is, uh, you would say, a bearish month. However, in 2019 and 2020, it's been in the green. 2017, obviously, in the bull run is very bullish. 20, uh, 2019 was very, very bullish, up 50%. Last three years has been very bearish for the price of Bitcoin. For the moment, it is in the green, guys. Uh, I've got a bit of a little mixed sentiment here because in May, you know the deal, what they say, you know, sell in May. Because basically the theory that I've got is people want to cash out for summer holidays, right? They want to have June, July, right? Some cash uh, and they want to sell their stocks, sell their risky assets and have cash for their summer holidays. And May on average, okay, for the stock market is a red month. Can this time be different? Well, we have seen 2019 has been very bullish in May and also in 2017 and 2014, very, very bullish. So I've got a little bit of a mixed sentiment here. I wouldn't say I'm very, very clear on is this May going to be bearish or will it be extremely bullish? I have a little bit of a 50-50 sentiment here looking at the data. Liquidity. Why can the price hold here this level of $63,000 range, maybe 62 with a slight drop here in the next one to two days? Why could we maintain it and continue to the upside? Well, most of the liquidity, short liquidations, is sitting above $65,000. No doubt we do have some liquidity beneath $62,000. But most of it, of billions of dollars, is sitting at 65,800 range. We got a couple of billion dollars there. And the most of it is sitting at $67,000 area, where there is several billion dollars of short liquidations, meaning that the price does have a chance in holding this level of support and maintaining here this zone and continuing to the upside. Legends, that is going to be it for today's episode. Thank you very much for joining. I'll be doing a live stream. I'm going to talk about bluffing, of course, about the copy trading. If you haven't learned how to trade on Bybit, which is my number one crypto trading platform, you got the video tutorial right over here. Thank you, and I will see you on the live stream later.